What's up, what's up? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. As always, this is episode 33 of Straightforward with Miss B, alongside guest co host AG. What's up, AG? What's happening? Mm-hmm. What's, yeah, I'm in here. what's happening in? Okay, now. Okay, now. First and foremost, I definitely want to start off the pod this week um, with just celebrating our HBCU um, University, Alabama State. It's Shout out to Alabama State. What's up? Play the song. Oh, no. Can't do no copyright infringements on me, buddy. No, no, no. Do it by, you know, humming. How I go? I don't know. See? <laughs> we both don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. We well, need to revoke our, that, revoke our alumni made us privilege. Learn that, though. I know, <laughs> but I don't <laughs> remember it. <laughs> I don't either. The orientation, they made us learn that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm still I'm sitting here trying to think how it go, but I, I have no idea. I'm just thinking about that thing that the band play. When they before they start doing their yeah, routine, that's what I'm thinking about too. Trying to at least get, hum it right, but I can't think. Yeah. Of it. But anyway, shout out to um Alabama State University. They played against Howard University here in Atlanta at Georgia State um, Stadium, and they won the game. I believe the final score was 23 ASU to 13 by Howard. Um, so I am a very, very proud, proud, proud uh, representative of Bama State University. Go Hornets. Go Hornets. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who lives here in Atlanta already as far as alumni goes. Um, a lot of people came from out of town as well. I, I was seeing some, you know, folks' pictures and everything on Facebook and Instagram and it looks like, you know, everybody had a good old time. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking forward to our homecoming game um, on October 8th. So That's th- homecoming? Yes. They moved the homecoming day. Mm-hmm. Glad I already got my ticket. <laughs> yes, it is homecoming. They changed, finally changed the date. You know, homecoming used to be, what, uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving mm-hmm. um, day every year. But... They decided to go ahead and make that change, which I am very appreciative of because most times when it was homecoming, I mean, when it was Thanksgiving, everybody was gone. You know what I'm saying? People was gone to their families and shit like that. Yeah, go home. So, yeah, I'm glad they ended up uh, choosing to decide to change the dates on that. Um, but outside of that, um, I didn't really get a chance. I didn't go to the game here. I was spending time with my family since I was not in town, you know, the prior week. So uh, my family wanted to take me out to dinner and everything. So I had, you know, a good time chilling with my granny and my mom and pops and everything uh, for dinner. How was your trip, Mr. Uh, San Diego? Balling out of control out in the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Balling. Balling. It. Mm-hmm. it was nice. 80 all day. Yeah. Perfect. That shit was perfect all day. Yeah, I told <laughs> you, San no Diego place. is very nice. It's a nice place. I ain't seen none of us, though. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're there, go. though. <laughs> yeah, we there, but you got to go over to the corner where they got it tucked off at, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told you, my, my uncle and cousins and stuff live in San Diego. Yeah, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say we ain't there, but I'm just saying well you ain't on the uh oh, the tourist. Yeah, they were where you were, basically. <laughs> yeah. And my partner, he stayed there all this time and I seen some of us. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't none of us just out here like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Well I'm glad you guys had a good time. I saw your pictures and everything. Y'all definitely looked like y'all had a great time. Oh yeah. All right, so we're going to get into this because uh, Mr. A.G. has a football game to go to. So uh, we're going to start it off, man. Nick Cannon, you know, he's he's. it seems like 
it seems like as far as Nick Cannon go and his um, celebrityism, if you want to call it, um, has been upheld not not necessarily by the work he does, but it's it's like it seems like birthing these kids every two weeks keep him in the news. So Nick Cannon is welcoming a temp child. A temp child, um, I'm sure, you know, a lot of you have seen those pictures and everything. I forgot the name of the mom. I want to say her name is Bria, Brielle, or something like that. Yeah, her name is, um, you don't know. Her name is, her name is Brittany. Brittany. <laughs> I'll be telling you what I don't know. I'll be trying to do me. Hey, like, you, you took a long pause before you said yeah, that I name. Got to go down I had to find it. You need to have your notes right in front of you. I do. I do. I just had to find it. Okay. You had to read through. Read, read through. So, um, with this. Tim child and you know some are speculating that you know he may be expecting more this year as well <laughs> another a second or third child as well to come um Vivica Fox uh, you know the actress um I haven't really seen actor I mean Vivica do any uh acting work lately but I'm sure she has I'm sure she has if I go through some Netflix movies or something like that I'm sure I'll see her um but Vivica Fox you know she is one of the um co-hosts on a um, show on Fox Soul, um, and she shared an opinion, an interest, interesting opinion in regards to um, Nick Cannon. She felt as though um, Nick Cannon is essentially doing a disservice to um, to his kids, to all of these kids that you know he's now having. Um, and more specifically, um, the young boys, you know, of his family. Um, by being uh, an absentee father, you know, Nick is a very, very um, busy man. You know, he has the wilding out, you know, he had a show, but he's always doing something. He does his music and no telling how many other business ventures Nick Canning um, is a part of. Um, But essentially with all of that time spent working Although Nick Cannon says that he does make time for his kids, do we really know that? You know what I'm saying? Like, is that truly believable? And do we think that Nick Cannon could, you know, be a great father um, despite being such a busy man? What you what you think about that? Well, first thing, we're going to start out with um, childless biblical fox, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do Vivica like that. So she doesn't have a child, so she wouldn't know what it makes to be a parent. Oh first my of all. god! But anyway, but anyway, um, <laughs> all that we can go on is what Nick say. You know, Nick say with his with the way his life set up, his 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 wife his life set up perfect for mm-hmm. kids. With them stacking out, I mean, when they do the wives now, they might do five shows a day. Right. You know, okay. We'll free him up. He got time. He just looked like you know what I'm saying. Time. He real busy. Right. Yeah. Okay, but <clears throat> do he really got time? My opinion on it, you know, it depends if he on got the person, you know what I'm saying? The person. Yeah. Now, if he a really if he really about the kids, yeah, he do. But if he just um like still partying and you know he's still partying making babies. <laughs> <laughs> right. He so doing something money. as far as making the babies go, so he doing something. He got babies by one and having baby by another one after the other one had a baby. I'm like, so right. all these people know about each other and they cool. It's you almost it, yeah, it seemed like he just he just rotated. He got a list of them and he just rotate them out, you know, every two weeks. He rotating the females out and then I think he got he getting he got pregnant. One one baby by two girls and the rest of them got multiples. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so as far as Nick Cannon, I think that, you know, Nick Cannon is, is pretty wealthy. Um, so I'm sure he has maybe more than one assistant who can help him plan out his schedule um, so that he can make time. But even with that, even if even if he has his schedule planned to a T um, to, you know, uh, divvy out his his free time to all of these kids, 
somebody's going to feel, I feel like, you know, at some point, one of these kids is going to feel left out. They're not going to feel as though, uh, because it's nothing like having a parent, like, especially in the household, number one, you know, the mom and the dad, and being, yeah, and being um, around, you know, on a consistent basis, and just. that's what they're going to miss now. They'll miss that, having a a parent, him in the house with him every day now. They ain't going to get that. Right. I'm gonna get that now. Yeah. Now, I don't know about just time period, but mm-hmm. they won't they won't get that time. Now. I know that's a whole different part of parenting, you know what I'm saying? When you wake up with them and go to sleep with them. Right. Every day. So I mean, from that standpoint and what you just said, I mean, I can un- you know, sort of understand Vivica Fox's concerns when it comes to, you know, him possibly being an absentee father or not a you know consistent you know consistent father um in the household uh with these kids um as far as the consistent importance male figure. well he's he's more than a male he's not a male figure he is the father <laughs> if it was like a stepdad type of situation yeah male figure but he's the father so you would think that he needs to be there you know what i'm saying to go to games and go you know what i mean Birthdays mm-hmm. and games and, and school, help drop them off at school and help out and clean, you know, clean their dirty drawers and damp pampers and <laughs> all kind of shit like that. Like, is oh, he yeah. really participate <laughs> in all of that? You know or what do, I'm saying? Or, what, or do he got too much money to be, he can have somebody do that. You know, once you get a little money, man, you start hiring people. You ever notice that? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I probably would do the same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have this. I'm about to do this. I ain't doing it no more. Right, but <laughs> but he's still absentee if he's not. You know what I'm saying? If he's not living in the home with them. Right, right. I agree. I agree. He can't live in. You know, he can't live can't in six, that. seven That's homes at at one time. time. Yeah can't do that at all so i think the import is very important you know very important as somebody who um did not grow up with a father figure in the household um i think you know and i do you know parts of my life i can see where it did have an impact on me that i did not have a father figure i became extremely mean towards me <laughs> <laughs> I became extremely me, but anyway, um, but yeah, I could definitely see, you know, and just listening to other, um, you know, kids or whatnot that grew up with our fathers in the household. And there is a lot of thousands and thousands of people out there, um, who didn't have fathers in the household. Um, I think that it is extremely important, um, so it's going to be, you know, it's going to be uh, something to see and very interesting um, to watch as Nick, as much as we can know about his personal life, it's just going to be interesting to watch how he handles, you know, all of these kids um, as they grow up. Um, somebody else who's having, who's had some issues, you know, in the father figure role or fatherhood role was Tyrese. Oh, Tyrese, what more can you do for me? What more? <laughs> he is so crazy. Tyrese was ordered to pay $10,000 a month in, in child support, um, according um, to a recent um, judgment here in divorce court. I mean, yeah, divorce case he had going on. Um the past week, his wife, it was noted that his wife had wanted to increase the payment to 20 k um, but it looks like the judge, you know, the judge, uh, settled it with, uh, 10 K. Um, but let me just briefly read this little article here, um, that I got. So Tyre- Tyrese and Samantha Lee Gibson, uh, recently appeared in court for a hearing in their divorce case to lay out what he wants from their split. Um, initially, um, Tyrese did not want to fork over spousal support or the keys to a Range Rover to his estranged wife. However, he was willing to let Samantha Lee keep one of their SUVs. Um, Tyrese was also looking to avoid sending Samantha monthly spousal support as he wanted their prenup enforced. Um, In addition to that, he requested joint physical and legal custody of their daughter, Soraya Gibson. As many know, 
um, you know, that infamous, infamous meme that went around of him crying, you know, crying out a couple of years ago. Um, he was crying over his, you know, not being able to uh, see his daughter, um, Soraya, and that, that, that clip, that video clip went viral. But now they finally got to a place where they are legally divorced. So months after Samantha had filed um, divorce in September 2020, um, it looks like the judge has decided who gets what. According to TMZ, on Monday, um, the judge ordered the actor to pay $10,690 a month in child support. Um, however, Tyrese and the judge kind of had a little quick spat because you could see it on Tyrese's face that he did, he was not happy with that $10,000 uh, judgment um, outcome. Um, the judge addressed the singer actually um, during this proceeding telling him, hey, this is not a punishment for you. Uh, put that money where it belongs, in the child. <laughs> put it in the child. So <clears throat> it looks like this particular judge, he, the judge was doing a power trip um, and probably with all the cameras and stuff that was in the courtroom, it looks like he was just trying to go viral his goddamn self. But yeah, Tyrese looked pissed, pissed off, boy. Did you see that clip? Yep. <laughs> how much do you think like do you feel like ten thousand dollars a month is a lot for one child in child support of course it's a too much you know mm -hmm. so you can take care of a family of shit ten or ten thousand dollars a month you know what <laughs> a what family mean? of ten <laughs> yeah ten thousand dollars a month yeah Oh my God! Oh, man, you pay you pay a three thousand dollar house note somewhere, mm -hmm. and you get your six seven bet. Yeah, ten thousand dollars you can pay for ten years. Oh, okay, easy. I think so. But anyway, I think you need to put a cap on it because what you're really doing is taking care of her mm -hmm. and and anybody else you want to bring in her life and that you want to pay for with ten thousand dollars for one child. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, only thing they be want to know is. What kind of lifestyle the child gonna live when he ain't with me? That's you what it's what all I'm about. No, oh, it's not. That ain't what it should be about. No, you ain't finna put me from no. You're not finna move me, make me move from a seven ten bedroom house to now. I gotta go to a three bedroom condo. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with that? You're not yeah. finna. My child was Come in on, private man. school. My pri child was he's in private he's, school. And he's still in private school. <laughs> he's still in private school. <laughs> well, the judge ain't the judge school. ain't say nothing about all that paying for I'm school. Like, man, you tripping? You think? I mean, <laughs> man, they P did or somebody like that. I mean, I understand they got a few million. What is net worth like ten million or something? Mm -hmm. But um, man, you finna be get all that. <laughs> man. If he don't make no more money, he's gonna get out. <laughs> <laughs> well he better he better goddamn be fast and furious real quick so he can go out there and make make some more, you know, coins. Yeah, if he can't make no more money out there in a few years, he's gonna be dead. He's gonna be dead. <laughs> he gonna you know be he, he gonna be back on that uh he gonna be back on that LA transit bus singing uh Coca-Cola yeah, Coca-Cola uh jingles <laughs> see what you do you force you force him to work and you let her stay at home she ain't gotta do nothing no more she's straight for a minute yeah she can lay down but, but yeah gotta, hopefully he, hopefully he she ain't got no up. grand lifestyle because ten thousand dollars ain't it, it ain't gonna be enough you, you, you what for who for her she not getting they not the judge did not award her spousal support she don't need it with ten thousand <laughs> <laughs> man, Not, you they li you act like grand. they you act like they live in Alabama, man. They live you in L.A. Three, okay, three grand or on somewhere to stay a month. You got seven thousand dollars, seven more thousand dollars every month. Okay, what about the school? What about with? school clothes? We split the school. You know that we'll go half on the school. I ain't got to pay for it. Nigga, you that ain't what the judge school. said. Well, a thousand dollars. If you do a thousand dollars a month, which that ain't how much school costs. Private schools cost more than that. A thousand dollars a month. The private schools 15, gonna run. 000. This private they school probably is probably like gonna 15, run them at least about. Yeah, it's gonna be at least about fifteen, twenty thousand a month. 
a month for a school? You crazy. Yeah. Man, I just saw I just school? saw two chains, I swear, like a couple months ago. He posted something on Instagram talking about how much the schools cost. I mean, how much it costs for him to send his kids to private school. And he was like, This is ridiculous. Private yeah, schools cost right. a lot of money. <laughs> Hello. Oh, he put his he coughing, child. He is coughing. Well, he done hung. He didn't hang up the phone. Oh man, he email. Uh, you <laughs> heard me. Crazy, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he You said twenty thousand dollars a month for private school. Yeah. Man, what kind of school that is? Man, let me look it up. We right here at the computer. Let me. I'm, yeah. I'm looking it up. You talking about what kind of school? How <laughs> much? At that school too, though. That's one of them schools, like um. That dude on Ghost, Ghost son and daughter went to. Mm-hmm. Them the one called twenty k. Nah, they shouldn't have called twenty k. Shoot, it look Tyrese. Like, it look like Tyree's daughter gonna be going to public school. Okay, Ooh, okay, you might be right. Let me see. It says. <laughs> Private schools in New York. That's what you good. It don't say a month. It just says the annual tuition. Oh, annual tuition for private. That's the year. Private. Okay, private. Oh, high schools is nineteen, but it says top schools in LA can be thirty thousand dollars or more a year to attend. Yeah, he got to give something on that. <laughs> that ain't part of that. That ain't part of that. <laughs> oh Lord. But anyway, Tyrese, keep your head up, man. Keep your head up, child. Uh, just get back online and, and, and record you a video and start crying again, man. You you better do something because she she at you. <laughs> she trying to catch you. <laughs> or start a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you better call it all your Hollywood favorites, baby boy. Child, he better get back to making music. That's probably what he need to do. So, uh, what he song? One Wish. No, that was Ray J. <laughs> <laughs> you know Tyrese he uh, man he had a whole album Tyrese was the shit that song yeah. sweet sweet lady would you oh, be yeah. mine and then he had the song about the zodiac signs <laughs> shoot he better get back to singing <laughs> shit Tyrese come on now you ain't get stop crying now get your hustle on Anyway, moving on. All right, so update. Nicole Linton, the ICU nurse who killed six people in a fiery crash, there have been some updates in regards to um, her mental health. Um, defense attorney, uh, defense attorneys um, filed a comprehensive outline of events um, leaning, leading up to the incident, um, which I think is good because it gets the public, um, everyone, a better idea of kind of what she herself not taken away from the crime that, that happened and the deaths, you know, rest in peace to those individuals. But a lot of us wanted to know, including myself, just kind of what led up to this situation. You know, how did she end up speeding into, you know, speeding into uh, traffic? Um, but according to the filing, Linton um, was actually diagnosed with bipolar disorder about four years ago. Um, immediately after this uh, deadly incident, um, it seems as though she lost, uh, lost consciousness. Um, since she, they came to that conclusion, the doctors did, they came to that conclusion because she does not at this time remember any details of what happened before the incident. The only thing that she remembers is she's lying. She was lying on the pavement after the incident and she saw her car was on fire. Um, what's further interesting is that, her family actually um, did, you know, write in some letters and, and gave some statements for this um, comprehensive filing. Um, they stated that uh, they pe- became aware of her mental health issues back in 2018. Um, her sister, Camille, one of her sisters, um, wrote in a letter to the court um, that um, Nicole was actually studying um, to be a nurse, uh, nurse anesthesiologist. Um, when she suffered her first mental breakdown, um, 
Camille quoted as saying, the stress was too much for her. It broke her. Um, when this happened, um, they say that um, Nicole actually ran out of her apartment back in 2018 um, and had and it had a panic attack. Um, and it looks like neighbors in the apartment complex actually called the police. Uh, when the police arrived, um, Nicole, you know, jumped on the police car and then she was then arrested for disorderly con um, conduct. Um, Nicole called her fa family from the police station at that time. And um, the only thing she was concerned about on that phone call was the well-being of her pet turtle. Um, so yeah. so um, then a couple of days after that, the sister says that Nicole told her family um, that she believed she was possessed by her dead grandmother. Um, at that point, the family was extremely concerned. Um, and then um, Nicole was then placed in the Ben Taub um, Psychiatric Hospital um, while there, she banged her head into a glass partition um, while she was on a rampage, um, just kind of venting about the police and the Supreme Court. Um, Nicole was, um, at that time at the um, hospital, diagnosed, this was when she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and she was also prescribed psychiatric medication. Um, so it's clear that, you know, the, la the, ye the lady basically... It's not a lie that she suffers from mental health issues. It's documented. Um, the hospital's documented it. I'm sure, you know, her local police or whatnot has documented it as well. Um, so I am kind of curious as to see, you know, like I said, from this point, more things will come out. Also, the, the I forgot to mention, the defense attorneys also wanted to clear up the fact about the number of in, um, accidents she has been in. Um, they did a comprehensive, um, you know, investigation. They contacted all the major uh, car insurance companies um, um, throughout all 50 states and there was you know they didn't find any you know any cases or anything about these incidents that people falsely put out there on her about 13 incidents so 13 accidents so um, that information was false and they wanted to just clear that up in the public um, but it's a very sad situation for her um, how you think that how you think her well we know at this point they're going to probably the mental health part is going to be her defense. Mm -hmm. um, thinking because of the severity of this incident, the number of people that she killed along with, um, like I said, this unborn child, um, how do you think it's going to stand up in the courts during trial? Um, it depends on what all they take in consideration because I think it's I think it's weak for me because if you ask me what happened and if I was to drive, I was in her situation, I wouldn't know nothing either. Right. Because you can't do nothing but tell on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know nothing either. So <laughs> you got to you gotta, uh, put your and see how the jury think and how they prepare, I mean, how they present it. Yeah. That's what's going to make it. That's going to, it's all about how they present it. So yeah. right now, I, I, I wouldn't believe it. Right. But if they put, make it make it believable, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? so. Right. Yeah. So it's I'm I'm like I said I'm gonna keep up with this case. Um, we've been getting a lot of traction as far as like you know just views and stuff like that. Um, on our YouTube and everything. Um, about this case. So I'm definitely going to you know just pay attention closely to it to see you know, what happens and everything. And I'm definitely going to keep everybody updated on what transpires um, with it. It's probably going to be some time before she probably do go to trial for this, um, <clears throat> for this. But, you know, the thing is now is that they, you know, she's been, they won't let her out on bond or anything like that because they feel as though she's a flight risk. Her family, she's originally from Jamaica, Jamaica. So they do consider her a uh, flight risk, but the family is trying to, you know, trying to see if they can get a bond because they feel as though, you know, being in a jail is not the place that she needs to be. They'd rather her be, you know, maybe have to sit in a psychiatric hospital until, you know, until uh, the trial and everything like that um, goes on. Tell me this. When you go to them psychiatric hospitals, do they start giving you medicines and shots and stuff? 
Uh, well, she was already prescribed at one point, but clearly she probably was not taking her medication at the time this incident happened. So I am also, I'm sure that they probably will uh, go ahead and, you know, just make sure that she gets back on the, the medication. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe getting her back on medication will help kind of help her uh, remember some of what happened. Like I said, as of right now, they say she cannot recollect nothing that happened except when she was on that ground and saw her car on fire. So, you know. That's weird, that's weird to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You always making something <laughs> funny that's not funny. Oh that's my god! Truth, anyway, you ain't watching the Raising Canaan? No, the sir. The police man doing the same thing. He he got shot. He oh, knows okay. who shot him, but he even said. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! But anyway, so we wanted to keep this segment kind of short today for you guys. Like I said, <coughs> AG is on his way. <coughs> Shit, I'm coughing too. AG is on his way to a game. Mm-hmm. So we want to get out of here a little early, but thank you all as usual for tuning in. You want to say bye to the people. Bye, people. See y'all next time. <coughs> Remember, you can check us out on Sundays, everybody on YouTube, where we have our group chat lives. It goes up. We keep it, you know, hilarious. You know, down to earth conversations and everything. So definitely come on YouTube around nine o'clock p.m. and join our live. Outside of that, uh, we're on all streaming platforms, Straightforward with Miss B, and on social media, Straightforward with Miss B. Also, you know, check us out. Until next time, peace.